mom come here when she was like probably in 45 or something. And at that time, the only way in here is by plane or by water. There was no road. I think in 1970, the road opened up. So it's like a 10 to 12 hour drive out one way. So what's interesting about this place in general is like, this is like the middlemost part of the world. You got the northernmost being Alaska and tons of people go there. You've got Southern BC, you've got the States and whatnot. But here it's like kind of the middle of this giant range. And uh, we wanted to see what this whole coast was about. So we took the ferry up and the ferry just afforded us these views of amazing mountains and the oceanscape. And that's really what Northern BC is about. It's just right where the mountains meet the water. We just saw a lot of really remote, beautiful country. It's, it's huge up here. It's super vast and it's uh, pretty special because a lot of it's really untouched. say the majority of the people up here are in some sort of heavy industry and flying back in those mountains you'll be like where you think is kind of the middle of nowhere like subalpine by a glacier and you'll see a, an active mine out there. Up here in 1965 they had a huge slide, the Little Duke slide it was called and dad was uh, on it, he uh, uncovered the last guy living there, I think he was buried for 72 hours or something, he had a sheet of plywood over him and that's when the avalanche programs really started after that I believe. It's just unbelievable the, the fall and, and the distance and the, the size of the avalanche paths. In every corner you get into there's epic mountains and, and uh, lines that haven't been skied and everything's just on a different scale really. first four days of this trip we were in uh, Bell 2 which is a lodge that's just like two hours north of Stewart. The fifth day we got to take the heli and fly to Ripley Creek which is in Stewart and we got to fly all the way there skiing through like some unbelievable mountains. Pretty cool to fly through, pretty spectacular. When I was young growing up it was uh, 3,000 people here, it was a mining town. To get in here, you have to choose to come into Stewart. It's one way in and out. So you've got the Portland Canal, just like the fourth largest fjord in the, in the world coming into here for the deep water port. I think it was uh, about 82, the mine shut down, and then it went to logging. And logging went for about uh, 15 years, and now we're kind of back to mining with all the exploration that's going on. I know when Grand Duke come here and you could only fly in or boat in, a lot of those people that come here are still here. They've liked it. They used to get really cheap housing and it was a good money maker. 
nowhere to spend your money. Where do you go to go spend your money then? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Rubens. I've been high to ride. Uh, it's nearly 100% alcohol right here. You know, it's interesting here, like a lot of places we go is like very tourist based. There's a lot of people around up here. It's it's blue collar workforce. I mean, we've met a lot of people along the way and they're all up here to, to mine. They're up here to log. They're up here to work for the forest. They work for for the avalanche control. That's that's what they do. There's that's you know, they're up here for a reason that's related to the, the economy. And to come up here as a tourist is a totally different experience.